Hello, hello, and welcome to Medicaid Lane. Guys, I'm really excited. I'm really excited about a lot of things. First of all, I'm watching one of my favorite things ever, An Idiot Abroad. That's just pff, awesome. And then I just recently got to 20,000 subscribers, which to me is amazing. I am super excited and super stoked about it because I've been doing this for years. And um, this is just, it's awesome to me. And I know 20,000, there's like so much larger channels and stuff that are like, oh, that's not a lot. Uh, to me, 20,000 is like a million and I am so excited. <laughs> So thank you to everybody that, you know, helped that. And also, I just want to take the time to say thank you to everybody that is a member or a patron. You guys are amazing. And the support you guys give me is just beyond helpful. And just basically, it's it's why I get to do what I do, which is this. Yay! <laughs> basically, one thing I get to do is an Idiot Abroad Season 2, Episode 8, Carl Comes home this is gonna be awesome I, I i didn't skip the intro because i don't know if it's different from the i i supposedly i've already seen everything so i should the nothing should be spoiled so anyway we're just gonna watch and um, i'm just like i'm pumped up for so many things and i also kind of wanted to watch this when i was completely healthy but that's never gonna happen there's always something wrong with me so whatever we're doing it today it <laughs> doesn't matter i need to pick me up and you know carl is just he's good at that so let's do this. I'm excited. The bucket list. Hi. See the glaciers before they melt. Go on an African safari. Encounter the world's largest mammal. The ultimate things to do before you die. Mm. Or are they? I traveled right across the other side of the world. It wasn't what I pictured. Sure, we got the right house. I stuck my hands in rhino shit. Yeah. Had a taste of that. Mm. It's horrible. Did he taste it? Oh, he did. I was proper struggling. I was I losing didn't weight that. and I was starving. That's rank. No. That does stink. Have a whiff of that. I like the hippo in the house. That was the best of everything. There you go. I haven't quite got over it and my heart's pounding still because it doesn't know what's gone on. Of course. Oh. And that's what you're like with this trip. <laughs> Nearly done me in. That was epic. Okay. Hello and welcome to episode eight of An Idiot Abroad 2. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the star of the show, the little round headed twonk, that is <clears throat> Carl Pilkington. All right. Well, Carl's been around the world again. Um, thank you for your questions. We're going to get to those. Uh, but first, I want to ask, why did you do it again? You swore <laughs> you'd never do it again. You swore on camera. It's a job, innit? Just got to earn a living. I'm in a programme called Idiot Abroad. Job offers aren't, you know, whizzing in. <laughs> oh. Oh. Uh, no. Let it happen. No. No. Oh. Oh. <laughs> you uh, chose the opportunity to be on a desert island, private island. Um, how did you find that experience? But you, you saw it. It wasn't a great experience. It looked beautiful to me. Fucking <laughs> freezing. just a bad start. It's like moving on a rainy day, this. I sure. thought it was going to be sand. It's all bloody rock. I travelled right across the other side of the world. It's pissing it down. Mm. It wasn't what I pictured. That's what I'm saying. When you have a dream, your head puts everything as you'd want it to be. Yeah. I'm not sure Ricky would be happy about this, Carl. I don't give a shit. There's no way he'd be putting up with this. Pop it over, over your head. Keep warm. To be fair, stuck on a little island, dressed in leaves, with it lashing it down, and you having to build a shelter like a chimp in a tree with gaffer tape wasn't my idea of heaven either, <laughs> to be honest. No. In my head, I was picturing... A bounty advert. A bounty advert. That's what I was picturing. A what? White sand in... A bounty advert. A bounty advert. Oh. That's what I was picturing. White I've sand, never seen one of those. Blue sea... Couple of palm trees. Half a coconut with a bounty. Bounty in it. In it. 
What's bounty to you guys? Bounty to me is like, um, I think it's, it's either dishwashing soap or laundry soap? Or am I tripping? Is it something else? Something that sounds like bounty. I don't know, but it's, it's nothing you drink. Oh. But the point of that is, on the bounty advert, it's 30 seconds. She's loving that bounty. Mm -hmm. I bet she was pissed off after she'd eaten it. It's not a drink. <laughs> and that's, that's the reality of it. Yeah. You don't look at the bigger picture, you go, that looks nice, and then you move on. One thing I've always wanted to do, and I hope I will get a chance to do it, which you did, the swimming with sharks. It looks amazing. Nope. That's all right, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, video. cheers. Brilliant. You brought that to life. <laughs> yeah. You allowed me how to paint a picture. <laughs> it's hard, though. Oh, my Other God. Other people will always have their experience of it, and yeah. it's what they thought of it. This is mental, this. Yes. I can see him. Doesn't look happy. Do they but, ever? But tell us your experience, how you felt. Right, I felt sick. <laughs> I would not too. very good on boats. <laughs> I thought I was going out for a night to see a dolphin. Mm. It turns out it was two nights on a boat to see sharks. Yeah. Well, I'm not great on boats. I was in a room that stunk of prawns. I thought everybody's room smelt like that until someone came in and said, Jesus, <laughs> what's gone on in here? <laughs> oh, God. See, the thing is, people are only thinking these things are good because they've seen it on the telly. Mm. They don't see all the work that goes they into it, all the, the hassle, 10 hour the track. Work. Yeah. Not even. <laughs> I do not. There's so many things I watch that I'm like, that's not good. <laughs> I don't want to do that. Is this how you imagined it? No. No. No, I didn't. Oh, fucking hell. They sat there, these nature oh. programs that are getting a gorilla, sat in the thing with its family, and they put nice music on it. <laughs> All the sounds and stuff. <laughs> Gorillas traipsing through with the family. Oh, look, it looks amazing. Body popping. It's in bright, right. sort of bright, you know, HD. Oh, that's amazing. I'd love to be there. <clears throat> like E.T. And in reality, my toes were bleeding, I had headache, I was being bit by mosquitoes, and I got there, and the first thing I saw was the mum gorilla sticking its finger up its kid's arse. Now, you don't see that as, a, as an, something that you go, wow. Yeah, yeah, I think they will. I think people will watch this and go, oh, wow. No, no, no. <laughs> this one has been one of the wonderful tracks. Wonderful? Yeah. <laughs> OK. I may say 10 out of 10. <laughs> He said part of the gorilla <laughs> trek was it's all about the hunt and finding it and looking at them. No, it isn't. Bring it to the hut. Bring it to the tent, sit it outside, I'll look at it for a bit, shift it. <laughs> That's seeing a gorilla. <laughs> Carl, His we're expression. often accused of bullying you. This is a, a recurring thing, isn't it, that we bully you. But <coughs> both of us, and, Carl, and Ricky in particular, is always concerned about your well-being, um, particularly in Alaska, if you recall. You are not going to be eaten by a polar bear. But... When you had your medical, I found out that you didn't let them test your prostate, did you? No. No. <laughs> no. But that's, that's... Why not? In the UK alone, more people die every year from prostate cancer than being savaged by a polar bear. It's a bit of a weird time to bring it up when I'm <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. It's one of the biggest killers, right? And, and that's just a simple test. So a doctor pops his finger up your anus and he goes, yep, you're all clear. And that's you relaxed for another year. Uh, I, I don't understand why you're suddenly caring about this now. I've got little battery left on this phone. I'm wearing the battery out. If right. something happens, I'm dead. Right. <clears throat> He's my best mate. Sue me. I'm worried about him. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. No, but why isn't there ever anything about how's your blood pressure? Oh, how are oh. your feet? You, you're in the cold. Are you warm enough? Are you... No, because... it was none of that. It was, yes, why don't you get a finger up your arse? Because often there are no <laughs> symptoms. Well, I don't want it done. I know you don't, but it's good for you. So, um, can we... Bring the doctor out, please. Right, well, this is a waste of time, then. This is Frank. Um, this is Carl. Frank, how's it going? You all right? Good, Good to see you. He's the uh, consultant urologist at um, St Bart's. Yeah, St Bart's. Bart's. Yeah. yeah. The thing about uh, prostate cancer is you can be perfectly well and yet still have uh, prostate cancer. 
And one of the ways that we can detect if that may be a problem is a rectal examination. The thing with um, just uh, feeling... I don't want a finger up the arse, though. Wait, you keep wait. going on about this. Right. I've told you time and time again. I mean, I presume That's... there's a lot of ill people knocking around that Frank should be looking at. Instead, he's here debating with you two whether he's going to shove his finger up my arse. How long will it take if you did it now? If you went... No, wait, how long will it... 15 seconds. 15 oh, seconds. That's that's time. That's fast. As far as I'm concerned, what are you looking for? <laughs> what we're looking for, OK, it's two things we're looking for. One is the size of the prostate gland. <laughs> Number two, it's the consistency of it. In other words, what it, what it feels like. It's a, it's a quick, simple thing to do. Carl, can I tell you what's going to happen? It's going to be about 10 seconds. He's going to say, you're all clear. You're going to say, what was the fuss about? And you know you haven't got prostate cancer. But not, not today. There's no better time. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's that you and I and the cameras and that are making it a bit intense. Oh, maybe we've got if a they went room. privately to another room. We've got a room, private room. It. We've got a private room. God, the expressions, Carl's expressions were just that stuff of just, <sighs> just too freaking funny. I, I have, I've, I've, I've been talking about this a lot, <laughs> particularly with my mom lately, but with neither of us, we just do not understand it. We understand people saying, oh, you know, being kids and, and growing up and, and, you know, when it's time to graduate high school and then, you know, pick something to, in college. Oh, I want to be a doctor. I want to help sick people. I want to cure people. I want to make people well. That's all fine. But how do you get in the particular lines of urologists, proctologists, gynecologists? What the hell? Especially, especially Especially if you're the opposite sex. So why on earth would a, 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 a male go, I want to be a gynecologist? Or why would a woman want to, you know, go, oh, I want to be a proctologist. I want to, yep, no, I, or, uro, or a urologist. I, I want to see all those things and stick my finger in all those. What? <laughs> why? Like the only reason I can understand somebody actually getting into that, that line of work is one is is fascination on the topic which is fine but it's very different to actually do the research you know at home than have to be you know <laughs> on the front lines or whatever and uh, the other thing that i can think of is that my mom and i agreed on is is basically oh you know what my uh like fine me a woman oh you know what my father died of prostate cancer so it was a really hard time and you know if there would have been someone that was passionate about sticking their finger up people's butts they could have caught it in time and he could have been saved so i took it upon myself to be that person to stick my finger up butts to help save people like my father like that's the only thing i consider like a very deep personal experience with that but I mean, how many people choose it because of that? Like, it, it can't be the same amount of people that there are doing it. You know what I mean? Like, I just, I, I, it's, I don't get it. I don't get it. There's some things that are fine. Cool cardiologists, fine hearts, you know. There's a lot of things. Like, there's a lot of organs, but some of them are just so, why? Anyway, that's all I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> He's so serious too. Oh, you wait here then. You stay here. I don't yeah, want stay, you to follow wait, wait here. Then. Frank, do you want to follow Carl? Can you um, show Frank and Carl to a private room? Thanks. Why? Here. There. Oh. You may as well check his testicles while you're there. Of course. <laughs> so what's, what's the... No! Oh, my God! <laughs> oh, no! That's oh, no. the way they go about it. <coughs> I've been travelling around the world in dangerous places. They've never cared about me before. Mm. Yet today, they, they keep going on about having this. Men are embarrassed about these things, you know? We're not used to these things. But for the sake of something that really is very quick and, and painless, we're talking about potentially saving a life. And before you know it, it's done and it's over. I know, but it's just... I don't know. It's, <laughs> it's day in, day out. That's what you do, seriously, every day? Yeah. Every day of my working life, that's what I do.
Why did you choose that? Up and do, get to do something better, or is this your future now? Just sticking your finger it's, up my partner's ass. It's part of my. It's just part of the job, you know. A lot of time I spend in, in operating. Okay, see that makes sense. I spend sense. in clinics. So how many people are you doing a day? Ten to twenty, maybe. And which finger is it? Is it a big one or a little one? It's the index finger. Why is that? Why not just a little? Because the, the prostate lies a little bit, a little bit in. If you get your hand, you couldn't. You, you just couldn't do that with your little finger. So you're going round the corner. You've got to go in and round. <laughs> you go in and then a slight, slight twist. It's, it's the thought is worse than the actual delivery. Let's, let's put it that way. It's the thought of it. All right. And okay. I, I, let's, yeah, let's do it then. Let's do it. Do you wear gloves? Oh, sorry, yes. But why is there a camera do you know there? Battles? Yes, the uh, comedian, yes. No, yeah, no. He had, he had a, a colonic on telly, yeah. never seen again. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's, that's far worse. So, rest your, rest your foot pillow. Why? Uh, no, I... Do to bend your knees up. This is so... Wrong. <laughs> it's fine that he's getting it done, but they don't have to be filming it and watching him like this. Vacating gel. I'll just... Right, so what I'm going to do is, if I may, I'm just going to pop it. Yeah. Pop yeah. Bend your knees up a bit more. Come towards me a bit more. So you're yeah, just going to marvelous, OK? Take a deep breath. Deep breath. And out, OK? And relax, breathe normally. Just pop a finger in there, okay? Deep breath, well done. Jesus, well done. that's high up. Oh, fucking hell! Right, that's surely enough, isn't it? Right, you're touching a lung. What? Enough, isn't it? Right, you're touching a lung. Well done. Well done. Your prostate's fine. <laughs> At least. Oh, Could you imagine, gosh. though? Oh, my God. What? Oh, horrible friends. It, if he found something wrong, what an absolutely awful situation to find out in. Oh, jeez. Why is he laughing? That's just... Well done. Brilliant. Brilliant. I don't think it's the sort of thing people pay us a kind of subscription for, to be honest. <laughs> In HD. In HD. Well done. Cheers for that then, Frank. Now, you are a doctor, are you? <laughs> <laughs> after. <laughs> he asked <Google>. after. <laughs> you represent the men who will never have it done, some of which will die of prostate cancer. Genuinely. I haven't quite got over it. My heart's pounding still because <laughs> he doesn't know what's gone on. My body's gone, what just happened then? No one's ever been that high up. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. So you're a human magnet. Mm -hmm. And they're magnet. Ma magnet. Ma magnet. Magnet. So tacky. Look, they're not even, they're not special or anything. What is going on? I've never heard of such a thing. Handy when out shopping. When, when you go food shopping. Carrier bags these days are really weak. But very thin. He comes our way, Tros. Done. Done. Because all he bought was a can of tuna. <laughs> Brilliant. I'm a magnet. I love this. When do you need to be a magnet? Well, what super pie would you like, then? I came up with one. I'd be bullshit, man. There's so many meetings going on where you know people are bullshitting. I'd just like to walk in. I wouldn't need a special costume. You just should have like one, this. though. And I'd fly in. I'd go, bullshit. You're talking bullshit. And they'd go, oh, it's bullshit, man. And I'd go, yeah, I, it is bullshit, man. You're talking bullshit. And eventually, people would stop talking shit. Th that could take off. I quite <clears> like... <throat> I mean, I know you said you didn't want a costume, but if I could get a little costume for you, what colour would it be? I don't need a costume. No, but you don't need it, but if I got one for you, what would it have? No, I don't need all that, cos that's just wasting time. That's more oh, bullshit. How do we know you're bullshit, man? How do we know you're bullshit, man? Because I flew in. Oh, well, you so you can fly. fly. So your superpower is saying bullshit, but you can <laughs> also fly. Yeah, but, but also yeah. people know if I've said it's Duh. bullshit, they know they were talking bullshit. 
Yeah, yeah, but but wait. That's my superpower. Wait, no, 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 no. Your superpower is surely flying as well. We didn't. Yeah. You didn't. We could all say bullshit. No, no. Yeah. The flying is necessary because of the amount of bullshit that's going but on. But if in you the could world. fly. But if I can't fly, how am I going to get a rep? There's loads of bullshit. Calm down. <laughs> what are you going to do? Keep jumping in a cab? No way. I'm going to be busy all day. No, I haven't invented this. It's not <laughs> my fault. You can or can't fly. No. Calm down. I know, but I'm saying if it was my superpower, <laughs> I'd want to fly in. Yes, my point. And I don't want a costume because I'd be constantly wearing that costume because no. of the amount of bullshit that's being said. Yes, I understand that. So you, so your point is this. Everyone can tell bullshit, but you need to fly to get there quick and get it out Just in the open. Can it quick. Yeah. And someone starts spouting How the bullshit. How can you hear them? So you can you're super, super hearing as well. As well. Yeah. Right. So you can... That, that's on, so what, that's right. what I was thinking when they, did, they were just showing him on the train. I was like, but he's like, they, somebody says that you fly in and then call out bullshit. How'd you hear what they said? How'd you know to fly there? What's going on? <laughs> right, can you see... Can you see where they are, or can you just... I'm just hearing it. So if there was a meeting, right, going on in Leeds now, and there was a bloke going, well, if you invest in this company, if you give me one million, I can guarantee you, you will make an extra million right. by the year. <laughs> I will double... I will... <laughs> double, <laughs> I will <laughs> double your investment <laughs> in one year. What? Bullshit! <laughs> That's how it would work. <laughs> you can see how... Oh, my God. I know, because, honestly, that's years and years of people spouting it. Yeah. Meetings, ever since being oh neck my God. Mm. It's like... That's, it's that's all you ever hear. OK, but in how would you programmes, know? in X so you... Factor... Honestly, X Factor will keep me busy. OK, it's yeah. the amount of shite yeah. that is being shite. told to people in that, and uh. all that crying, that'd be the next one. I don't know what I'd call it. That thing when girls do that now, I don't know where that's come from. When they're getting a tear coming on, they go like that. Oh. I want to Oh, girls! Stop doing that. <laughs> I was like, girls? What? Who? Oh. <laughs> He's mad. He's passionate about this bullshit stuff. I'm from. When they're getting a tear coming on, they go like that. <laughs> I want to fly. Fucking stop doing that. Yeah. Sure. Fucking hell. That does stink. Have a whiff of that. Oh, no, it did. No. Not, I'd say, but smell. It's a good smell. That's rank. No. It is. No. I've found that I've enjoyed food more since I've got back from Japan. Because you appreciate... Just nice food. Yeah, but that's only because you're only saying it's not nice because it's different. That, I mean... No, it wasn't nice in Japan. I was proper struggling. I was losing weight and I was getting moany because I was starving. And there was nothing. I was going around saying, have you just got any toast? And they look at you like, no, oh. and they give you like a squid bollock. <laughs> <laughs> it's just nothing. That's for breakfast. Yeah. Yum. yeah. yeah. It's not like they save the weird shit for, for tea. That's breakfast. They start you off with weird stuff. And the hard stuff. And do you know what? Ooh. I didn't tell them, the people who were away with me, but I was struggling that much on two mornings to try and get through it. I was eating strepsils because I was found the... that my, my taste buds went numb and they didn't have a clue what was going on. And I just was shoving stuff in. What are strepsils? Have a big bit. Have like a little big bit. Have a big bit. Big. Don't start saying you don't understand me now. Oh, oh, I'm gonna be sick. There's something in the middle of it that's really grim. I'm gonna be sick in your Japanese garden. I'm pretty good now at just shoving anything in. I've eaten geckos. I'm not that fussy. I've stuck my hands in rhino shit. Yeah. Had a taste of that. This isn't me being a bit, ooh, mm. it's fucking horrible. <laughs> Apparently that's that's like the, the start of sushi. That's where it all began with that. How did it carry on? Why didn't someone say, what is this shit? Pack that in, stop serving that, and that should have been the end of sushi. 170 quid. OK, what do you recommend? What, what should they just, get over there? Just have a look at any other country's menu. Nip into any restaurant, get a menu and go, oh, right, that's what people like eating. Yes, it is, not phlegm. <laughs> <laughs> OK, that's fine, though, but proper... If they would have given him proper sushi, proper sushi is delicious, and there's a reason people eat it all over the world, because it's freaking amazing. My dad my dad used to travel a lot. Well, he still kind of does, but whatever. Um, and uh, he likes he likes a lot of fish and seafood and all that, but he likes food, and uh, he likes sushi, and he told me that... Nothing, nothing, nowhere in the world does sushi compare to actually, you know, properly done in Japan. It's like one of the most delicious things ever. But I, I didn't see him eat proper sushi. Like that was kimchi fish or whatever. That was special kind of stuff. But proper sushi, I mean, 
my guy, it, it's good. We're talking about yummy stuff here. Just something normal. Bloody <laughs> 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 when she comes out of the water. Oh my God, it's letting its own. His face is just brilliant. So that is mental. That is mental. That is mad. My dad didn't let the cat in the lounge. <laughs> Fucking hippo in here. That was the best of everything. An animal here that normally kills people, right? It's a number one killer, a hippo, right? You have to trek, you have to stay well back, you can't see, you've got to look at hippos through binoculars. Suddenly, there I am in a house where someone's got one as a pet, a hippo in the house. Tea on demand, biscuits when you want them, hippo in the front room. That is the ideal. <laughs> <laughs> Why always see him in the same surroundings? Because it's in a lake. Cruel. It's not cruel. It is cute. In this case, it can it go free. It would have been dead. It would have been dead. It was saved. But could I just say that wild animals should never be kept as pets? You can't suddenly start keeping wild animals His in pet. council houses in case you pop round for a biscuit and want to see one. <laughs> I'm just saying that for me, I'll never forget it. It's a surreal moment. You, you've seen hippos out in the wild. It's boring. boring. Have you? Yeah. I haven't. I've seen you frozen in an actual habitat. Boring. What, what chair are you sitting in? <sighs> How Wait, good where's the would carpet? It be, where's the carpet you fat get? <laughs> <laughs> so you're telling me you'd rather queue up at the zoo to see some animal sat like that on a rock looking fed up than walking into a house not knowing what's in there, going, oh, what's in here? Wandering in, oh, that nice plasma you've got. Oh, nice sofa. There's a gorilla in the corner. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> Taking an animal like that and seeing it in normal surroundings, <laughs> it makes it even weirder. It's amazing. I'll never forget it. I'll forget a lot of the he other things. He has a point there, he has a but point But the hippo there. in the house was a highlight. Hippo in the house was brilliant. That and the volcano, they're the highlights of the whole yeah. thing. Okay, now. Look how much he enjoyed that. Why was the volcano so amazing? Just because it's madness, it's dangerous. You stood on the edge of it. It makes you realise that the world is alive. You don't but think about that, do you, when you walk yeah, about just, on concrete? I'd rather have one in my front room, though. <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd go in, I'd go, oh, nice plasma. Yeah, new carpet. Volcano. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> Let's have some marshmallows. <laughs> I'm not walking. I've got one here. <laughs> You've got little ears. Long arms. Short legs. Is this your speech? Isn't that, isn't that a tragedy that some of these species could be gone in a few years? The mountain gorilla that you saw, now... Yeah, there's only 700 and odd of them so left. So precious. So precious. And yet you didn't really want to trek for it. You'd have rather it came round your house. I wouldn't want them wiped out. We're saying they're the closest thing to human. So what's wrong in having them in your house? That's a very human thing to do. Treat them like a human if they're very close to being human. Come on in. Sit down. All right. Of course I don't agree with them dying. There's people who kill them just for their hands so they can have an ashtray mm. of a gorilla hand. How it doesn't even work. Well, it doesn't work. That right. doesn't even work as an ashtray. Right. The ash is going to roll through its fingers. It's a bit chavvy as well as a design. Yeah. I, my furniture wouldn't work with that. Nothing to do with is it nasty and all that. It's a horrible thing. You mean if it was a fake one made of... I'm just saying a hand. <laughs> Forget it's a gorilla. A human hand. If it was a piece of art, a ceramic... It doesn't work. No, it's the cruelty no, that it, I find yes, disgusting. It doesn't work. It's not the design. It's a yeah, beautiful right? design, a gorilla hand, work. when it's attached to its fucking arm. But a hand there, look, yeah. it doesn't work properly, does it? Yes, well, we're not talking about whether it. it works. We're talking well, about how vile and disgusting it is. It is. Yeah. But think about it. If there's anyone out there who is vile and disgusting, it doesn't work <laughs> as, a, as a thing on a table if you're putting your fag on it. Mm -hmm. Go like that, the ash rolls through the fingers. No, no, it's perfectly it doesn't fingers. work. That's the message that should be out there. Don't have a gorilla hand, not because it's cruel and that, which it is, because right. it doesn't work. <laughs> Double prong message. If its, it's head was there, cut its head off, you can put fruit in it. That works. <laughs> That's cruel, but I'm just saying it doesn't work. One of my favourite things about this show isn't just getting you to exotic places or out of your comfort zone, it's you in. I want these. I don't have one, but there's molds to make them. One hand, sure, maybe it is quite dumb as a, as a shape, but there are molds for bowls and stuff where it's both hands like this. Ah, they're beautiful and they're very freaking handy. 
for like anything for plants or, or as a bowl not so much for soup but like for trinkets or your keys or whatever and they freaking go with any kind of household okay so just i i'm, I'm with you on one fine and not gorilla like human shaped hands they're very pretty i like them very much um but fine, fine. One won't work. I'm just saying it doesn't work. Mm -hmm, sure. One of my favourite things about this show isn't just getting you to exotic places or out of your comfort zone. It's you interacting with people. Are... That's fun. Are you okay? Yeah. I love this. Are you gay? No, I've got, I've got a girlfriend, 17 years. Fuck <laughs> boy. <laughs> hey? Fuck. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Fuck, fuck, fuck. <laughs> Safety's on. That's an AK-47. Yeah, I've heard of them. Crisp, biscuit, fruit, wiggly worm. Wiggly worm. My favourite bit, I just think, when he was, you know, cooking for the king and then he got caught up in the moment like it suddenly is kitchen, when they go, they want another pudding. Who does? All of them. I've only got one dinner custard. Like, suddenly, oh... But he's the king. Not in my kitchen. <laughs> I'm Carl Cookie Pilkinson. Uh, pudding, yeah. chocolate, uh, sponge, custard. Thank you. Quite warm. <sighs> God, I'm knackered. No wonder Rams is always swearing. Carl? <laughs> yeah? I think they want another round of cake. Who does? All of them. I haven't got enough. I bought one box of custard. You took it so seriously. Because what's the point in doing anything if you don't? Mm. Mm. Good point. I mean, there are some great characters in this. One of my oh. favourites is the Russian taxi driver. I'd love to get him over here and you you'd show him around. No, you wouldn't, though. No. I was stuck in a car with him in busy traffic in Russia. It was a nightmare. Hope you do not value life too much and got good life insurance. The brakes in this car just failed. It's the worst car I ever bought. It's British, and I never thought a car could be made that bad. Right. Right. <laughs> what do I you say to found that? The Russian equivalent of calm. It's because I was stuck in a car with this miserable bastard. <clears throat> but he was saying the same thing. He felt you were a miserable bastard. He didn't like you. Russia, though, is quite. It felt like that. It felt like you're not meant to be happy. Maybe he's your bog standard Russian. Everything's quite hard. Signs, the text on buildings. I've never been a lover of font. <laughs> I think there's too many fonts. Right. But after being over there, they've got, like, one, and it's in capital, it's yelling at you. <laughs> Even if it's something nice. Kittens for sale! <laughs> <laughs> Everything's <laughs> as as fucking sharp. Okay. Now, despite the fact you didn't really get on with Russia, the Trans-Siberian Express journey actually threw up some of your favourite things. You ended up um, at, at the Dwarf Village. Great. I thought it was really good. I mean, how can you fault that? It was just slick. You know, he had like a little Rich and Judy come out at the beginning. They sort of introduced everyone, different singers. It was it was like our life, but miniature. It's like a little Britain's Got Talent. There was a little Peter Andre who came out, did a little sing song. Little woman with glasses on, Lily Allen. It it was just really familiar. Enjoyed it. And people at home, you'll probably. I think it's hilarious that everything they did was little because they're little. He did a little sing song. She did a little this. They did a little dance. Dude. <laughs> this guy is just going, something else. It's not right. Just really familiar. Enjoyed it. And people at home, you'll probably get some going, it's not right. Shouldn't be looking at dwarfs singing and dancing on stage. But we do it with X Factor. The early stages of that are a load of divs. Everyone knows it. The people come in, aren't pretending they're here just to see singing and dancing. They know the dwarfs. Everyone's having a good day. What's wrong with it, really? So if I was a dwarf, I'd definitely come here. I wouldn't hang around at home. There's nothing for you at home. You don't get looked after like this. You don't get given little houses and a stage to perform on and all that. I've always thought being small would be all right. Being a dwarf, I'd rather be a dwarf than like Steve, who's almost a giant, because <laughs> the world's not made for a giant. Being a dwarf, being on a plane, loads of leg room, king size Twix is massive. The world's Twix. overpopulated, oh, especially in China, and they're like over a billion people. <laughs> Perfect. You want to be smaller, more room. They need sure. more of them, actually. 
and then I look at it and I think, is that, is that how we're meant to have evolved? Maybe that is the future. Maybe we're the odd ones out here, when you think about it. Be a dwarf. That's not good advice, be a dwarf. Well, <laughs> That's impossible well, advice. How? how? <laughs> All right, fair enough. I'm just saying that it was one of the best times I had, that. And I think more people should go and visit, because that is helping them out. And something they haven't sort of tapped into, but I think they could make money from, is sort of renting themselves out to people who don't know if they want a kid or not. <laughs> because even though they were grown men, there's something that makes you want to sort of go like that on their head. Too many people jump into having kids and don't know if they want them or not. Some yeah, yeah. Pets. But would the wow. dwarf have to affect the mannerisms of a child? That... They kind of do. The way they are around you, they're sort of laughing and joking. But that's what a normal person is, and most people are sort of laughing and joking. Right, what's your you. idea, then? What would you get, to, get them to do? Get them to do anything. But they haven't got any work over there. But they can work... Doing what? In offices. No, they can't, because the, the tables are too big for them and stuff, aren't they? You've got to start Still accommodating is. them. And nobody wants to. But we do that with wheelchair access. I'm just saying, you're all a bit like, oh, you can't say that. Well, yes, you can say that, because there's a load of old bollocks. What do you want to say? That we're I'm just saying say? there's nothing wrong with it. If one of them wants to act as a kid, rental, <laughs> he should be allowed to. <laughs> I'm just saying, like if one of them... <laughs> kid <laughs> rental with Dwarf. Now, of course, we asked viewers of the show to ask any questions that, uh, oh. that they'd like to ask of you. Oh, fun. We'll put them to you. And this <clears> is from um, Sarah from St Louis in Missouri. Um, Hi, Carl. Just wondering, why are you friends with Ricky? You have completely opposite personalities and he loves to annoy you. What do you get out of this relationship? His question. face! <laughs> question. I don't think we do have opposite personalities. I think we're very similar. No. No, we're not. But I think that's what I like, the challenge of it. It's like having a dangerous pet. <laughs> <laughs> you never know, it could end up killing you. And that's what you're like with this trip. You've nearly done me in a few times. I can be quite happy and I go, I feel a bit too content. Mm. Call Ricky up. <laughs> Two minutes, that's all I need. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> she hadn't called him. Sure. Makes so, you feel alive. Just to stunt his happiness? Great. Bucket list. What do you want to do, Carl? I want to drive down Route 66. All right, then. What are we doing? You at the cuddle party. Couldn't stand it. Uh, no, I, mean... I don't understand why you didn't just have a cuddle with someone. Well, with strangers? Yeah. What difference does it make? I think a hug is there for a reason. What's a hug there for? You hug someone when they're fed oh. up. Mm. Well, I'm fed up now. No, you're not, though. Well, look! It's your abusing <laughs> hug. Carl, you're gonna get Carl, one. look. You know, you're not going to get one when you're doing that. <laughs> we're not a bloke anyway. Well, no, I don't hug. You, you said it wasn't to do with male or female. You said it was to do with being a stranger's. I know you better than anyone apart from Suzanne. Yeah, well, I'm not. I'm not. I'm still not happy with that. How would you feel I if I scooted up behind you to spoon you? Would that be OK? Well, that's worse than a cuddle. Yeah. That is a cuddle. That's more, that's more than a cuddle. Yeah. Right? What if I put my back to you and I face the other way? Well, that's all right, cos that's just cos we're all... It's crowded. Touching like that, that's just, that's just like being on a so tube. So I could do that? But you don't touch people on the tube. You do. <laughs> in London, you do. It's a nightmare in rush hour. Really? You'd love it. <laughs> It's ridiculous going around cuddling strangers, but mates always hug. Do you want to hug me? Yeah. Well, yeah well, only if it's a... all no. of us. I don't want him well, to feel yeah, left out. No, I'm not there. left out. You have a hug. You no, know each other longer Stand than up. you. Let's no, I'm not having a hug. Come on, Aww. Come on, have a hug. No, it's not. Come on, hug. I'm not happy with this. Get him down there, because the pump pad is going to come back. Come on. So, hold on. I think he should be on the floor, and we should have a little man wedge. Do you want to get on top of me, Steve? Let's have a little man wedge. Well, I want a piece of car, like. I know, but you can have a... Love man wedge. Oh, that is... Oh. See? Fucking hell, I think he's going to have a Oh, God! Well, if you've got one, I have too, Steve. <laughs> is that Frank again? <laughs> <laughs> what, what is it, your program? The program. The program, the name. Idiot Abroad. The board. Idiot Abroad. Idiot. Just... I'll write it down. There you go. Uh, idiot Abroad. Uh, ab abroad. Abroad. Idiot Abroad. That's the program. The name of the programme? What you, McMahon? You don't believe him. Idiot. 
I bought. Yeah, don't shout Idiot. about it. Idiot. I bought the yeah, yeah. name. I know, I didn't want oh. it. It was meant to be Carl Pilkington's 7-1. Idiot. Yeah, I know. I bought. Yeah, yeah, it's not good. Idiot <laughs> name. Yeah, there's a name. Yeah. Idiot. Mm. Div. Knobhead. No pet. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm not. I'm not idiot. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. a friend came up with the title. You are not idiot. No. I don't know the name. I know, I know, I know, ah. but, but ignore the name. Idiot. I'm bored. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. This guy reminds me of my grandma when she was alive. My, uh, she, she's a woman that had several health issues and stuff, and um, she suffered several strokes in her lifetime. Uh, which left her, you know, several muscles in her throat and, and her cheeks and, and several places here uh, not functioning properly. So she had very quite a difficult time speaking. So she didn't speak much. And um, zero, absolutely freaking zero English. And when we came to, to Argentina, uh, lived with her for a while, you know, talked to her and everything. And, and my, my brothers were teenagers and they were just a mess and... Just, you know, all the testosterone and, and teenage moments and stuff. But anyway, they were always just sp just speaking. <laughs> they were just always, I can't, I, I can't think of the word in English, but basically they're always just cursing each other out and that kind of stuff. There you go. And always just bad words and curse words and this and that. And one time, my grandma, which was absolutely hilarious because she didn't understand. Not only did she not speak it, she understood zero, zero, zero English. And this guy's reminding me so much of her because one time she caught on when my brothers were saying like, oh, fucking A. And she started repeating it <laughs> kind of like, like a parrot would, just like really loud at an inappropriate moments. And my mom was so shocked the first time she, you know, heard that. She's like, no, you're not supposed to say that. Oh, my God, that's a bad word. And just like a child you would with a child just because it was just so out of the blue. And um, my grandma, kind of like Ricky, loved to be a pain and loved to just bother people and do everything you're not supposed to to just make people mad. She was like that. She was a she was a character. So she would do it all the time, dude. And the face of joy, the expression of absolute joy that she knew she was saying something she shouldn't and it was bad and it was pissing everybody off. <laughs> just like this guy saying idiot abroad. <laughs> <laughs> the same expression as my granny. That's funny. There you go. I know, I know, I know, ah. but, but ignore the name. Idiot. I'm bored. Okay, <laughs> no, okay. It's the same. Just, it's the same. <laughs> Let me ask you a, another question from our viewers. Yes. Here's one from Gareth Sutcliffe, and he says, Carl, French novelist Marcel Proust once wrote, the voyage of discovery consists not in seeking new landscapes, but in having new eyes. With that in mind, could you sum up your travel experiences and offer your view of travel in a similarly meaningful quote? They broke Carl. Oh my God. Don't piss ass about traveling, getting jet lag, eating food you don't like, shut your eyes and imagine stuff. Wow. That Beautiful. Was, that was deep. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, I've had the shits. <coughs> sure. This is good. Cools you down. That's going to give you a headache, not get rid of one. Look how complicated it is just for a toilet. You don't have the, the skill of Bill Gates. Just have a shit. <laughs> you can't do any of that. You can't do that stuff. But it's a robot. Oh, boy. It's a crisp picker up or a... If you want some crisps but you don't want to get crisps on your hands, you use a crisp picker up or a... I'm, I like the fact that you... I'm a little disappointed that with these, and the first one as well, they have so many hours of things they film, and when they show little cut-ups and scenes like that, they show things they already showed in the show. Like, they have so many other scenes that, that they could just put here and there to just kind of complete the experience of things you haven't already seen. And they just kind of 
I've seen this. Want some crisps, but you don't want to get crisps on your hands. You use a crisp picker up or a... I like the fact that you've got a bit of a rebellious streak in you sometimes. You go off-road. And I, I called you when you were in Japan, and you dropped this bombshell that you've finally decided the one thing you want to do before you die. And that was to invent something. And you oh, said it's because yeah, you yeah. want to leave a legacy, which I thought was brilliant. <coughs> well, just because you're, you're dead longer than you're alive, aren't you? OK. I'm coming up sure. with stuff all the time. That's why I think this is my strength that hasn't been used yet. I can't do this sort of thing, really, this sort of job of being on the telly. Look at Dyson. It's only a vacuum cleaner. Yet he's up there with Einstein and everything. He's well rated just for a vac. And I reckon I can come up with something better than that. It doesn't have to be a cure for cancer. I'm not going to come up with that. All I can do is come up with something that I needed at the time and that I think other people will go, do you know what, that's a bloody good invention. So something that benefits mankind? Yes. OK. He, he, he pitched me the idea over the phone and I said, I'm out. <laughs> OK, well... Pitch it to me now, then. Right. In Japan, they don't have these... You mean they don't have... Chairs. They don't have chairs? Yeah, of course they have chairs. You try finding one. You sit on the floor all the time. When you go in a restaurant, you sit down cross-legged. You get a flat ass and your legs ache. Yep. Right? So you've invented what? It's the Pilco pump pant. I'm sorry, the Pilco pump pant? <laughs> it's a pair of pants with a cushion built in the ass. <laughs> the inflatable pant. Stops your ass from getting wet. For men or women. Do you know the thing you put on your neck when you're on long flights? Yeah. I've used that. That isn't how the finished thing would look when I, when I make it. You know, this is a prototype. Pilco pump. Excellent. I like how even, like, the camera crew is just laughing I at I sold him. some on a shopping channel. You're slagging them off, you're saying, I'm out. Watch this. But this is the lovely man I was talking about. It is our lovely Carl to bring you some trousers. Is this real? All right. How's it going? Hello. <laughs> good one, good one. Morning, everyone. Hope you're well. It's the pants we're selling today. Look at that. Not bad, that, is it? He's come on the telly to flog me a pair of pants. We know about pants. We've seen pants before. You haven't, though, have you? You haven't seen these pants. It's that bit there. That's the seller. That's what oh we're here God. for. That's what we're talking about. It's the Pilco pump pant. The way it works is you've got a big zip, a good quality zip. Look at that. Doesn't stick. It's a quality zip. <laughs> stick, quality zip. All right? Open it. There it is. There's the cushion. You might have one of these already. Shove it in there. You know you're going to be sat down for a while. You're waiting for that order of the sofa. You're waiting at the bus stop. You haven't got a seat because the queue's big. The buses are delayed. Where are you going to sit? But well, the beauty is you can sit where you want. Sit on concrete. Sit on the road. Not on the road. That's dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> sit on the pavement. <laughs> sit on grass. <laughs> and there's only 15 pairs available. 15 pairs in the whole world. Do you want to be one of the 15? Still 15 left. To have the Pilco pump pan. Look at him. Uh, Look at him in them. There you go. I thought they were going to be so terrible. much better. I'll show you how easy it is again. It looks like some sort of medical yeah. procedure, doesn't it? That's what people would think if they saw you walking in. They think that you've, you think you've uh, had right. your arse removed. Get rid of that. Look at that for a pocket. <laughs> Look at that. Like I say, we're carrying more and more stuff around think with Think of carrying stuff in that. In the, your arse yeah. rattling around with stuff. Yeah. Mobile wow. phone, football. Laptops, iPads, it all that lot. Terrible. Look at that. Look at the size of that. Who's pocket. putting a laptop in their, in their arse? Bread. Eminem! Milk, loaf, bread. Eminem in Rap God. So, mmm. Just say, dude, I thought it was gonna be like actual an actual pair of pants that actually look good and the padding be on the inside, not on the outside, on the inside very discreet and, and just actually be pants that you could wear and it wouldn't look stupid or like something you would buy only if you had hemorrhoids. <laughs> I mean, the idea was there. It could have been executed so much better. I, I even, I even, I believe that after somebody after watching this made a proper pair just took the idea and ran with it in a, a good direction and made something a lot better and they I, I i wouldn't be surprised at all that a pair of these actually exist properly well done well made for like hikers or something so you can rest your butt on a rock while you're hiking or whatever but um wow 
And I absolutely love that. He didn't even, like, he, th th what was made? It's just pants, butt, butt pants added the butt zipper, and then you put, like, the, the airplane pillow, the neck pillow, and so it, very, very, very little effort done here. Th this isn't a legacy, Carl. This is just ridiculous. Put a laptop in, the, in their arms. <laughs> I like the name, though. Milk, loaf, bread. You don't want to buy a carrier bag. They're charging you five pence a bag at the moment at a supermarket. Yeah. No, I'm not buying a bag. You just turn around at the cash point, stick your milk in there, stick your bread in there, oh my God. off you go. A big, big pocket. You've got this. Health and safety these days. You've got that in there. You oh, my God, are people really buying them? Maybe buy some for your young no kid. Way. You're walking by the canal, he falls in. Is he a good swimmer? I don't know, you tell me. But if he falls in, he's got something to keep him buoyant. Upside down, like that. He's like that, he's drowning. Like, like might be yes. a bit like yeah. I'm just saying, <laughs> just the possibility <laughs> that he could help him out if he fall in a canal, a lake, a river. Um, um. Anything else, anything else goes. Hang on, let's see how the orders are going. Have we had anyone calling in yet? Two people on the phone. What do they want? Do they want to talk to me? Or what do they just... want? They've gone. They've sold them. Job done. Brilliant. Cheers for that, everyone. These are how they look in real life. This is the Pilky Pump Oh, my pump goodness. Pen. Pilko Pump Pant. Yep. OK. I mean, it looks ridiculous. It does look ridiculous. So does most fashion these days. OK, no, good. Yeah, no, yeah, if it was... Yeah, no, you're right. If it were the same, but, like, in the pants... It, it could just be somebody that's particularly packing in that area. Somebody that just did a, a few too many squats, but that <laughs> just no. Yeah, it's all just arbitrary. Sit down. Yeah. Sit, well, why sit well, is the chair? You don't need a chair. That's doubled up. You must be too comfortable. <laughs> sit on the floor. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sit on the floor there, because that would be. And I suppose particularly useful if you've had a finger up the eyes. Right, there you go. So there you go. perfect timing. Right. Yeah. Dead comfy. Yeah. Sure. Really comfy. Um, Carl. Can you go and bring me my sort of bread and milk and stuff that I... Have you got five pence for a carry bag? I, I, I haven't, no. Well, I haven't. Hang on, don't worry about that. See you in a minute. What did you want? Bread and milk? Some groceries, yeah. Look, imagine walking down the street wearing that. Absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> Carl, it looks... <laughs> it looks Is fucking it ridiculous. <laughs> It doesn't know. It does. It looks like that. You, no, no one, no one will walk down the street like that. No mm. one. Hold on, Carl. I bought you. Um, oh, I didn't no, break look, it. look, Carl. <coughs> Carl. There's no restrictions. I've bought you a couple of cu no a cups and saucers. Yeah. Can you take? I bought you these for you. you got a bag. Time. I haven't got a bag. No, just pop them right, in there. Pop them in. You, you, yeah. You see, you, yeah. Just. Oh, well, can you shove them in? Yeah. Just put them in there. Shove them in. Oh. There you go. <laughs> Be, yeah. oh, sorry, sorry. Good. They're safe for that, yeah. All right, okay, all right, yeah. Go ahead. Run for the bus, mate. Quick, run, 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 run. Quick, quick. Suzanne's at home. Oh, <laughs> here comes Carl. Here comes Carl. Yeah. <laughs> With our new crockery. Honestly, that isn't pulling me down or anything. That is fine. That's... It's absolutely ridiculous. No, well, you'd bubble wrap them normally, wouldn't you? <laughs> Would you? Unbelievable. <laughs> so wait, I am to believe, I don't know what number they started with, but either 20 or 15, I am to believe that there's, say, 20 human beings on this green earth that actually have in their possession a pair of Pilko pump pants. That is just fabulous. All right. Wow. Wow. I just want to say, Carl, I was impressed all the way around with the stuff you've done. I like the fact you didn't do stuff you didn't want to do. I thought it showed um, real drama and resolve. You weren't just a puppet. You weren't just an idiot, an adrenaline junkie. You were doing things that mattered to you. Um, is there anything, though, you didn't do that you wish you had? If you could do it again, would you go, do you know what, I will do that now, I will bungee jump, or I will... Is there anything you wish you'd have done that you didn't? In Japan, I wanted to do karaoke. What would you sing? Do a bit of, um, Chaz and Dave.
about this. Oh my god. And Look at him go. You had <laughs> me where you wanted me. That was awesome. That's awesome. Was only done for you. Carl, I think you can sing. But now you can go with you. Oh. Just what you want to do. Oh, fuck's sake. I'm telling you. I'm not, I'm not doing it. Cause I ain't gonna be made to look a fool no more. You've done it once too often. What do you take me for? Oh, Ricky. Hey. Up and keep rolling. You can do it. Yeah. Yeah. And if you think I don't mean what I say, and I'm only bluffing. You do it. Yeah. You got another <laughs> thing coming. I'm telling you that for nothing. Oh, Ricky, I'm leaving. <laughs> Fuck me. That's what I'm gonna do. Just wonderful. Absolutely loved it. There were like seconds of scenes that weren't shown, but still, oh man, this this guy brings me such joy. Him, Carl Pilkington, and and Bob Mortimer are two of the people that I've been watching that just bring me such freaking joy. They're so different too, but they're so just adorable. They're like naturally funny and adorable, and it's just I, they're so. I don't know if relatable the word is the word because one is bizarre as hell and the other is just well Carl. <laughs> but oh my god, do these guys make me freaking smile and happy and laugh. Just absolutely love it. So, oh, I hate that I'm finishing this. All right, I have season 3 to watch, which I think is just 3 episodes if I'm not mistaken. Get that done soon and then I have deleted scenes which I think is from just like the whole three seasons, the whole complete Idiot Abroad experience, which is also going to be fun. I want to watch that. So this was amazing, but it also just, it's sad. It's, it's, I wish there was more. I wish there was much more, but whatever. Okay. I love it. I love it. And I can't wait for, you know, season three. That's going to be fun. That's going to be fun. I'm not exactly sure what the theme is. Because it was the, se the, the Seven Wonders, Bucket List, and I'm not sure. I know I know he's with w Warwick? War Warwick? I don't know if that's his name, but it's something very similar to that. I know he's with that guy, but I don't know what the theme is. So we'll find out. We'll find out soon enough. So no need to tell me. doesn't matter. It's not really whatever. Spoiled. I just, yeah. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for everything. You guys are amazing. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed. I know I did. I just, I love this. And I just, it, it leaves me on this particular kind of like comedy high after I watch these. And I just love that. And I just, I'm going to ride that. So yeah, there you go. Thank you for everything. I hope you had a wonderful time. I hope you continue to have a wonderful time. And I have hope you guys have like just a fabulous tomorrow. Thank you all for everything. You guys are amazing and I am off.